If you're thinking that $100 won't get you very far in today's comic book market, you're not alone. It's not a lost cause though. The market moves quickly these days, but Como has your back. In this video, I'm bringing you my current top 10 comic books to invest in on a $100 budget. Let's go. This video is brought to you by Otis. More on them later. $100 used to get you some pretty nice comic books. I remember when I first got back into collecting in 2005, I was buying collectible copies of single digit issues of Amazing Spider-Man for under $100 a piece. I mean, it's crazy. Unfortunately, those days are long gone, but that doesn't mean you can't pick up some desirable issues for your collection for a hundred bucks. But before we get into the list, be sure to click the like button, subscribe to the channel, share this video out, any or all of the things that help support the channel. I appreciate it. Sometimes comic books take off because they are the consolation prize for collectors when a more desirable issue prices itself out of reach for the average collector. In recent videos, we've discussed a few of these books. Marvel's Masters of the Universe number one, the Wolverine ongoing series number one, and our number 10 book is just the next entry in that list. Marvel's Scooby-Doo number one from October of 1977. One of the hottest gold key books around over the last few years is the original Scooby-Doo number one, and it's big bucks and it's really hard to find in the wild. But that's not stopping fans of the character from getting a little Scooby in their collection. Collectors have been turning to the Marvel series number one lately, which has caused the value of this book to shoot up to the $100 range. Keep an eye out for the 35 cent price variant on this one. The value of that one is a spooky $2,500 for a high grade copy. Batman villains first appearances are one of my favorite things to collect. And with one of the best rogues galleries in all of comics, it can be a daunting task to try and collect them all, especially when you start looking at some of those golden age first appearances. Lucky for us though, a new bat villain comes along every few years to give us something new to chase. Our number nine book is Batman 386, the first appearance of the Black Mask. A guy who clearly has some daddy issues. I mean, seriously, he carved his mask from the lid of his father's casket. That's messed up. Black Mask is slated to be one of the villains in the upcoming Batwoman season two. Published in August of 1985, this issue comes in under our $100 price point at $85 on average for a high grade issue. But don't be surprised if this issue catches a bit of a bump once the teasers and trailers for Batwoman season two start to show up. Steve Ditko is a Marvel legend, having co-created the Spider-Man and Doctor Strange universes with Stan Lee in the early 1960s. But his contributions to Marvel did not end when he and Marvel broke up in the summer of 1966. In January of 1992, Ditko created one of the more interesting characters in the Marvel Universe in Marvel Superheroes 1991 Winter Special, or as it's technically known, Marvel Superheroes Volume 2, Number 8, the number 8 book on the list. In this issue, the world is introduced to Squirrel Girl for the first time. Squirrel Girl has a bit of a cult following in the hobby, and the character's quirkiness would be great for a future Disney Plus animated project. If you're questioning her superhero prowess, keep in mind she winds up teaming up with Iron Man to take on Doctor Doom in her first appearance. I would generally recommend starting with a lesser tier supervillain for your first trip out. Sitting right at the $100 mark, there are newsstand copies of this issue floating around, which may prove to be more desirable in the long run compared to high grade direct copies. Way back in the early days of the Como Comic Books YouTube channel, I put out our first comics to invest in on a $20 budget video. It was May 1st, 2020. In the number three spot of that video is the same book that's occupying the number seven spot in this video, House of Mystery 290, the first appearance of Andrew Bennett, better known as I Vampire. News recently broke from James Tinian IV, and if you're not familiar with him, he's the guy writing a good chunk of the current comic books you'll find on most recommended reading lists, that the upcoming DC vs. Vampires event starts off with Andrew Bennett braving the midday sun to deliver a message to the Justice League. Since that announcement, House of Mystery 290 has seen a lot of interest in the market, 
with a major uptick in sales. More interest translates into higher prices, which has driven the value of this March 1981 DC release to $80. Again, squeaking in underneath our $100 budget, this is just another example of an undervalued Bronze Age DC book. The speculator market has been specking on Adam Warlock for a long time. Guardians of the Galaxy has brought many Warlock-adjacent characters to the big screen already, and with another film on the way, there's an expectation that Warlock will finally be making his MCU debut. And luckily, there's a variety of books to speculate on for not only Warlock, but other characters related to both Warlock and the Guardians. Our number six book, Strange Tales 179, features the first appearance of one of those characters, Pip the Troll. Straight from the mind of Jim Starlin, Pip was a prince who was mutated into a troll-like creature after going on a bender with some mutagenic ale. I mean, this guy knows how to party. A longtime ally of Warlock, Pip and Warlock would first team up to escape Magus, setting up numerous other adventures for the pair. There are rumors that Pip may appear in the upcoming MCU project, The Eternals, which is helping drive a little bit of interest in this book. Currently valued at $75 for a high-grade copy, this book is trending up and could see a more substantial jump if Pip is confirmed for The Eternals or the forthcoming Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. This video is brought to you by Otis. What is Otis, you might ask? Otis is an alternative investment platform where you can buy and sell shares of cultural assets, including contemporary art, sneakers, and collectibles such as comic books and video games. It's as simple as downloading the Otis app and signing up for the service for free. Then just watch for the weekly drops of new assets, or you can search the catalog of previous drops to choose which items you'd like to invest in. From there, you simply manage your portfolio by staying up to date with the latest news and pricing information on your investments. And when the time comes, you can either sell your shares to other Otis members or receive a proportional return on your investment if Otis sells the item you've invested in for more than the price in which you bought your shares. At the time of recording this video, there were some great key comic books available. The most recently acquired comic book asset is an extremely sharp looking CGC 9.8 copy of Special Marvel Edition 15 with white pages. This book features the first appearance of Shang-Chi, the title character from the upcoming MCU film Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Other comic book assets include classic Silver Age Marvel issues, including a CGC 9.6 Daredevil number no. one with off-white white -white pages, a CGC 9.2 X-Men number no. one with white pages, a CGC 9.4 Avengers number no. one with white pages, and a CGC 9.6 Fantastic Four 52, which features the first appearance of the Black Panther. If Silver Age Marvel isn't your thing, there are a few great Bronze Age keys to choose from as well, along with a CGC 9.8 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one. Sign up for Otis with the link in my description and you'll get your first share free when you fund your account. Terms do apply. Thank you to Otis for sponsoring this installment of comics to invest in. And now let's get back to the list. With What If quickly approaching from Disney Plus, the animated wing of Disney's Marvel projects are about to take center stage. Our number five book, Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur number one, is said to be in development for a future Disney Plus animated project. Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur 1 features the first appearance of Lunella Lafayette, otherwise known as Moon Girl. Published in January of 2016, this five-year-old issue is by far the newest book on the list. Currently, the average sales price for a high-grade raw copy comes in right at $100. Not too bad considering the first appearance of Devil Dinosaur and Moon Boy is only going for $50 right now. I see this book being a big hit with parents who are trying to get their kids into collecting comics once the show comes out. At times, it's hard to tell who's more popular, Todd McFarlane or Venom, a character he famously co-created. Our number four book gives you the best of both worlds. Coming in at number four is Amazing Spider-Man 298 which features Todd McFarlane's first art and cover work on the Amazing Spider-Man title and the first cameo appearance of Venom. If you need more, ASM 298 also features the first appearance of the Life Foundation and Carlton Drake. 
If you're like me, you constantly mix up 298 and 299. I am physically unable to keep these two books straight, but the last few years have been good to both of them as both now bring $100 or more for a high grade raw copy. 298, which we're featuring here, comes in right at the $100 mark, while 299 actually costs you a little bit more, coming in at $140. With ASM 300's price leaving the stratosphere, books like ASM 298, 299, and 316 have been gaining a lot of traction with collectors who want to collect early Venom appearances, but have been priced out on ASM 300. I'm doubling down on Batman villains in this video. Coming in at number three is Batman Vengeance of Bane number one. Published in January 1993, Vengeance of Bane 1 is the first appearance of Bane, the Bat villain who would go on to break the Caped Crusader's back in the Nightfall story arc. Bane has been featured in multiple Batman movies, the forgettable Batman and Robin, as well as being the face forward batty in Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight Rises. On top of that, the character quickly moved from the comic books into other media as Bane made his debut in Batman the Animated Series in September 1994. An oversized, square-bound, premium format issue, Vengeance of Bane number one would run through multiple printings, with the first printing currently being valued at $100, while the second and third prints come in at $25 and $50 respectively. One of the most affordable first appearances for a Batman villain of such stature, Vengeance of Bane 1 should be in every Bat fan's collection. If you're getting value out of this video, do me a favor and hit the like button. Likes, comments, and sharing of our content lets YouTube know that you enjoy our videos. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings is just around the corner, and collectors are starting to shift their focus towards books related to this movie. Our number two book is one of the issues that is starting to see an increase in interest in the market. Coming in at number two is Master of Kung Fu 29, the first appearance of Razor Fist. Razor Fist has been confirmed to be in the movie and was even briefly featured in the recently released full trailer for the film. Up 20% in value from just a few weeks ago, Master of Kung Fu 29 is currently bringing an average price of $90 for high-grade raw copies. Master of Kung Fu is a title that flies under the radar for many comic fans and in my experience is a title that can be found in long forgotten back issue bins for prices well below their current market value. If you'd like to learn more about comics related to Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, then check out our recent top 10 comics video I released on Shang-Chi books. I'll post a link in the cards up above. Coming in at the top of the list, our number one comic to invest in on a $100 budget for the summer of 2021 is Doorway to Nightmare number one, the first appearance of Madame Xanadu. This is a book I've been talking about for a while now. In fact, in the end of July 2020, Doorway to Nightmare was featured in one of our top 10 comics to invest in for a $50 budget video. 12 months and a project development announcement later and our paths crossed once again, only this time Doorway to Nightmare is a $100 book. In June 2021, Bad Robot, J.J. Abrams Production Company announced that it was beginning to work on a Madame Xanadu project for HBO Max. Madame Xanadu would also be a likely candidate to show up in a Justice League Dark project. Incredibly undervalued compared to the first appearances of other characters associated with Justice League Dark, this book is another one of those overlooked and undervalued DC books that is finally starting to get some of the attention it deserves. While it may seem like $100 doesn't go as far as it used to, there are still a lot of great books that you can pick up for $100 or less. The convention calendar is extremely crowded for the rest of the year, so I hope you have a chance to get out there and dig through some long boxes. Bring some cash, brush up on your negotiating skills, and stretch your $100 as far as you can. Don't forget to check out Otis with the link in the description below to get your first share free when you fund your account. Again, terms do apply. Happy hunting out there and collect responsibly. I'll see you in the next video.